In this video, I want to start working on the actual shop inventory. So to do that, we kind of need a shopkeeper. However, I'm trying to think of some either other ways we can go about testing this, but I can't really think of any. So we're just going to go ahead and make our shopkeeper class. So to do that, let's go ahead and go to our C++ classes, public, actors, and we're going to create a new one. So we want to do the type actor and give it the name of shopkeeper. Let's go ahead and create that class, and of course Visual Studio opens. Alrighty, finally got it closed. Let's go to shopkeeper.cppn.h. We want to set tick to false, and remove our tick function, because obviously we don't need it. And then add a couple basic things. So obviously we need a... We're going to use the uh, mannequin mesh for the shopkeeper, so we're going to add a skeletal mesh. So let's do a U or U property, edit defaults only, category equals. Uh, let's do. Actually, we don't want a category for this case, and we're gonna do a U skeletal mesh component, and let's call it uh, shop keeper mesh, and for declare. Let's go to the .cpp. We want to include components, skeletal mesh component dot h, and then create the default sub object, just like we always do for the shopkeeper mesh. So we're going to do a skeletal mesh component and give the name skeletal mesh component. Then we want to set the root component to equal shopkeeper mesh. And that should take care of most of that. And for the time being, uh, let's see, go to Interactable Interface. When we go to Interact, I want to actually inherit from this so we can make use of it. So let's go ahead and inherit from this interface. So we want to inherit from I Interactable Interface, which means we also have to include it. So let's go and include Interactable Interface.h and inherit from our interface at our public section. So we can go ahead and override it like so so we're overriding the interact function passing in our character which we could probably forward declare like so and now we need to go ahead and generate that implementation and for the time being let's just do a log so you log log temp warning text uh shop keeper so we can go ahead and print that out when we interact with it now let's close down the editor and relaunch Alrighty, now that we're back in the editor, let's go ahead and create a Blueprint version of our Shopkeeper in Blueprints, and name it BP underscore Shopkeeper. Now for the mesh, it comes with the female mannequin, just, just so we can. Let's use that. And drag and drop it into our world. We'll do it, uh, we'll do it right here. And rotate it by 90 degrees. So, there's our Shopkeeper. Now let's go ahead and bring up the output log, and when we click on it, we should see the text appear. So I press E, or actually I need to scroll down to the bottom. Press E, and nothing's happening, and we're walking through it because apparently it has no collision. So let's bring up the shopkeeper, click on the mesh, go down to collision, and as it's set to no collision, we want to set it to block all. Compile and save, and let's try it again. So I can't walk into it anymore. I press E, and it displays Shopkeeper. So that means our interface is working. No extra code required other than that. So we know we're good to go there. So we have our Shopkeeper class. Now we just want to go ahead and add some items to it. So let's go ahead, and if we view our character, we should have our item array here. So it contains F item data, which contains obviously again the item class, image, cost, all that fun stuff. So we want to do the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and copy all this. Uh, we should not need to use an on rep. I can't think of any reason we would. So we're just going to leave it as so. So let's copy it, go to our shopkeeper.h. 
paste it in. We need to include our, can we forward declare that? Yeah, I don't think so. Can we? No. I don't think Unreal Engine allows that. So instead we want to include, now it's called structs.h. Normally I call it data types. I don't know why I called it structs in this case. Anyways, we don't want it to be an on rep. Instead, we just want it to be replicated. So let's go to our shopkeeper.h, or .cpp, sorry, and set b replicates equals true. And then we need to override the get lifetime replicated props to obviously set this to replicate. So we're going to do get lifetime replicated props, which takes in a array of lifetime properties. Let's generate that implementation. We want to call super on it and then do the do rep lifetime do the class a shopkeeper and then the variable which was inventory items so instead of inventory items i'm just going to call it items to keep it simple and that's it now we just have to simply include net forward slash unreal network dot h and we are pretty much done with that so the only thing we have to really do is add some items to it. So the way we can do that is while we have it set to be replicated, we can also set some default values that it might have to begin with. So we can do edit defaults, or let's do edit anywhere, because I want to just be able to add these kind of however I see fit whenever I want. So from there, we can simply iterate through it. So let's do a for loop for f item data, pass by reference, call it item and items and we're going to do ue log log temp warning text and we want to print out that item so let's view our structs.h we do not have anything in there that indicates an item name so it probably wouldn't hurt to do that however i don't see it really being you know a necessity so instead what we're going to do we might actually have to re let's see. I don't know if that'll replicate or not. Oh well. So let's just print out the uh, cost. Percent F. Item dot item cost. And that's all I want to print out. So let's close down the editor, save it, recompile and relaunch, and see what we get. Okay, let's go ahead and reopen the assets. And if we go over here, we have our items. So we have item one. Let's just go ahead and add the blueprint for food. Obviously it needs the food item. And we can really go through and honestly simplify this. So instead of going this route, it instead adds this dynamically because I'm not very happy with this. I didn't think that all the way through. So let's try a different approach instead. So what are our items a base class of? Well, let's go to item.cpp or item.h, and they all kind of derive from a item. So we can see gold goes from a item and so on. So what we can do is set up a default. So let's go to a U, our U property here. Where we have, I'm in the wrong one. Let's go to our shopkeeper, sorry. And we want to go ahead and make another u property so u property we want it to be edit anywhere blueprint read write and honestly category doesn't really matter and we want to do a t array or better yet we could create a struct for this i feel like a struct would probably be better so let's go to I'm being completely brain dead here. Let's go to item.h and this contains item data. So let's think here. So we want to have a T subclass of a item so that way we can easily select the item. And then I want to have the ability to select the amount of that item that I want to actually go through and add. So the only issue I can think is it does contain the F item data structure. My concern is accessing it. We should actually be able to access it 
by getting the class default object. So I think we did that somewhere. Let's see. Yep, there we do. Uh, so in the use item, we get the item and then we try to get the default object, in which case we call it the use function for it. So this is essentially just getting the, uh, creating the actual object instead of using spawn actor. We're kind of doing it the normal C++ way that you would create a pointer, so to speak. That's kind of what it's doing. So let's give this a try. We're going to have a simple, or sorry, we actually need to create the struct first. Let's go to our structs.h. Copy this use struct. Let's save a little bit of time and paste it. And let's call it f uh, shop spawn data or shop spawn item. In which case, we have these view properties. We want the T subclass of, which is of the item, you know, A item. Uh, let's see. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's probably not going to work either. So better off for the time being in sake of the tutorial, let's add, we can just modify the stack count. So we'll construct it and then add the stack count. So if you're doing this yourself in a separate project, this is where I would differ from what I'm doing now, because I don't think it's really the best route, so to speak. So let's click on the mannequin. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the blueprint. Let's just add some items. So we'll add the first one. It's going to be the food. Obviously, it's going to be the food and the item cost. How much do we want to charge? Let's do 30. And then the stack count, let's do... 500. So we have 500 of that item. Let's add another one. This one's going to be the med pack. So let's do 50 for this and stack count 250. Compile and save. And now when we press E on it, we should be able to see the results. I press E and there we go. We print out the price of the food and then the price of the actual item, and it also contains the stack count. Because obviously, we have the stack count, so whenever we use the item, we want to subtract from it. Now, we just have to kind of think of a different route of how we go and use the item. So we see here, when we call and use item, we're going to do the same kind of thing, except inside of use, I want to have it kind of branch differently. I don't know if that makes sense. Instead of just... Wait a minute. All right, I got myself a little confused there for a second. So when we call use, for example, we use the item. So a reference of what we're actually using. Let's look at our food. We call use, and it removes hunger. Well, instead of removing hunger, we want to pass in a boolean here that can indicate that it's from the shop. And if it's from the shop, what we want to do is we want to send in the item data. So we want to call the, essentially what we're doing here in the interact function for our item. where We add the item to the inventory by passing in the item data. So we're just essentially transferring the item from the shop to our character one slot at a time, or sorry, one stat count at a time. So that should really make it simple for us to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and close all that down and we should not need our interface anymore. But we can continue with this in the next video because we also need it to display. So we're going to focus on getting the correct widget to display. So when we walk up, you know, we press E on the shop. I want this to pop up displaying the shopkeeper's inventory right here with our own inventory right here. So currently it's obviously it's fixed filling up our own inventory. But I want it to do the same over here. So we, you know, move it. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. Well, hopefully we'll get that done. Anyhow, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. We have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below. And I'll see you in the next video. And I should really consider actually setting this up to where I don't have to say it every single video. And instead, I can just edit it right on in.
Anyhow, goodbye.